The problem is water is very conductive. So measuring the conductivity of water is a pretty sensitive apparatus. What's conductive is the impurities that are in the water, right? There's ions, salts, whatever it may be, that carry the charge in the water. Water not being conductive, we know that it's what's in the water that's conductive, then we can use that to our advantage because if we have really pure water, after like say a reverse osmosis system, right, then that pure water will have a really low conductivity, okay? And if we take low conductivity water and then we put it into a boiler, well in a boiler, the steam leaves the boiler and all of the impurities stay behind, right? I think most people intuitively know this because we know that distilled water is very clean, right? Well, if distilled water is very clean and that's just water that was made to steam and then recondensed, then what happened to the stuff that was in that water before it was distilled? Well, it stayed behind in the boiler. And so what we see is that as we feed water to a boiler, the conductivity of that boiler goes up and up and up and up. And it can continue to go up if we never do any, any blowdown. Uh, on most high pressure boilers and in like an industrial facility, that blowdown is gonna be in the form of a skimmer line or a continuous blowdown. So we use the skimmer to control boiler water conductivity. The, the other term that gets thrown into this then is to control boiler cycles. So cycles gets thrown around like everybody knows what it means, right? So cycles would be cycles of concentration. So if I have a, a feed water conductivity of 25 and a boiler water conductivity of 2500, then, you know, the math's not perfect, but it works out to about 100 cycles of concentration because the amount of conductivity in the boiler is 100 times more than the conductivity of the incoming water. I've been told that's not perfect math, but I'm not a chemist. So roughly, that's kind of how it works. So for the thought experiment anyway. So what does that mean? That means if I have conductivity 25 coming in, boiler water conductivity that's 2,500, and I have 100 cycles, that means that... I have to be removing some water to hold it at 100 cycles. To get 100 cycles is 1% continuous blowdown or 1% off the skimmer. So that would mean for every 100 gallons I feed the boiler, I flush one gallon out through the skimmer line. If I can only tolerate a conductivity in the boiler of 2,500, but my incoming water is now 50, well then now that's only I can only tolerate 50 cycles. So I need to blow down 2%. And so as I increase my blowdown, my cycles of concentration goes down. And so we do that depending on how our incoming water changes or how much condensate we're getting back. Because again, condensate is distilled water. It's very clean. So as I, during some parts of the day, I might get a lot of condensate back. So my water is much cleaner. And so then my blowdowns can go down. How do we adjust for all of this? What, is, what does it mean? Why do we care? Well, most modern boilers today, I'm going to say of a couple hundred horsepower and up, we're going to see what's called a, uh, a conductivity blowdown controller. So it's going to sample that water at a regular frequency that we can set, or, or typically we ask the water treater to set. And it's going to sample at that frequency and, and measure that blowdown conductivity or that boiler conductivity. And if that conductivity is high, it'll leave that blowdown valve open until that conductivity comes within range and then it will close. So that would be like a sampling one. Some of the higher end systems as we get into larger and larger boilers are gonna have a, a throttling valve that's constantly adjusting and trying to hold that conductivity just so. Uh, but those, it's, it's a pretty damaging service, so those valves are pretty expensive. So we see that when a boiler crosses maybe 100,000 pounds an hour, just to make a number up. Less than that, oftentimes we see these sampling systems that are on five minutes uh, and then off for an hour kind of a deal. Smaller systems, right, like in a brewery, for example, they may not have continuous blowdown. They may just do a bottom blowdown once a day, and the water in the system kind of just keeps going around and around and around. It's a pretty tight closed-loop system. They're not really going to have a skimmer, or if they have it, they may not use it. And they can still control their, their conductivity or their um, cycles of concentration just fine. In that large, you know, kind of typical industrial steam system, we're controlling that conductivity with that meter on the wall to keep at that conductivity target. The problem is water is very conductive. Measuring the conductivity of water is a pretty sensitive apparatus. Those transmitters, those systems that we hook to the boiler, those automatic systems, can get out of calibration pretty quickly. And so we need to have 
either a water treatment professional or ourselves, uh, boiler operations staff, that can properly calibrate that online meter. So usually that looks like a handheld meter where they're doing their own testing, taking those results and then recalibrating the unit that's mounted to the boiler that's live and in real time. And that handheld system then they can calibrate to like a calibration solution. So that allows us to know that we have good readings. We're doing a good job of, of limiting those cycles of concentration. I have often seen where uh, a customer thinks that their blowdown controller is working fine. And then when we grab a handheld and calibrate it and check, they find that their conductivity was 500 ppm uh, or their dissolved solids was maybe 500 ppm above where they thought it was. And so it, it's very important that on some regular frequency, we're calibrating that wall unit and that we're checking it with a, a separate handheld, you know, potentially or, or usually we're testing that every day just to make sure that if something's out of whack, we catch it early because it wouldn't take very long for our blowdown system to be malfunctioning for us to scale a boiler. You know, in a week, in a boiler that's heavily loaded, you could start to cause pretty severe damage that would be fairly costly to get out of there. Uh, and again, that depends on load and a lot of factors and how hard your water is. But if something was really messed up and we were no longer blowing down at all, we would want to catch that very early. But let, let's talk kind of high level numbers. And this is, this is really my experience, but a good guideline out there would be the ASME water quality guidelines. But if you Google search it, you can find the old ranges that were out there. And I always tell people, hey, that, that's really general vanilla advice. It's not the right thing for all people, but it, what it does do is the, the ASME water quality guideline can act as a Rosetta Stone. And what do I mean by that? I'm not a chemistry buff, but if the guideline says that the hardness of my incoming boiler water should be under 1 ppm and my incoming uh, makeup water to the, to the deaerator or to the boiler system is 3 ppm, then I should stop and say, I'm above this guideline, does that make sense? I'm not sure. So then I'd have a conversation with my water treatment provider about that. What do we need to do to lower our incoming water hardness? Is it, is it a problem the way it is? The even better question is, how much money could I save by installing or repairing the softener, even installing a new softener or repairing the old softener? How much money would I save in chemical? And oftentimes they can tell you right away, well, yeah, you're running 10 cycles. And if your softener was functioning and we could get that hardness down to zero indicated, you know, somewhere around zero to half a PPM, then you'd be able to run 25 or 30 cycles. Well, that's directly calculable. Then uh, you come to a boiler guy like myself and I can say, I can show you the difference in water usage and in uh, natural gas BTUs and, and therefore also in CO2 tons annual savings uh, in order to justify the expense of either repairing or installing a new water softener or reverse osmosis system. There, there can be significant savings in addressing these things. And so those water quality guidelines, like I said, it's, it, it's a Rosetta Stone. It allows me to benchmark my system against something because otherwise I'm not a chemist. I don't know what I'm looking at. So I'll compare a customer's readings to that ASME water quality guideline and then go have a conversation with their water treatment provider and say, hey, what's going on with this? Why are we here? And they'll say, well, we think they're getting some contamination or we think we've got a leak in a heat exchanger or we don't think their softener is quite working right. And they start telling me about all these problems that the customer knew were an issue but didn't really understand how it was costing them money, how it was causing them to use more chemicals how it was causing their blowdown valve to stay open longer. And so we can just walk through these things then with myself and that water treatment provider and that customer. And all of a sudden light bulbs are going off all around. I'm learning from these water treatment guys and these customers about their processes. And they're learning about how that affects our gas usage and our water usage in the boiler system. It, it can be really uh, a really great conversation to get your boiler service provider, your water treatment provider, and your boiler operators and, and boiler room managers together around a table just to look through these things. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, if I said something that you disagree with, leave it in the comments or send us an email at sales at Thanks.